SmackDown vs Raw 2006, a game filled with classic names from the end of the Ruthless Aggression era, with stars like Kurt Angle, Heidenreich, La Resistance, The Hurricane, Luther Reigns… Luther Reigns? Over the years, there have been many instances where superstars were supposed to appear in a WWE video game, but they ended up being removed for various reasons, such as leaving the company or being taken off TV. Now, when this happens, unless the change takes place right before the game's release, a lot of these stars never see the light of day as developers remove the models and any reference to them from the game files. Thankfully though, the final version of a game that ships to retailers isn't always the only version, as multiple versions of a game are created throughout development, with a lot of the earlier versions including superstars that will be removed for the final release. One case of this, which has only just come to light, is SmackDown vs Raw 2006. When booting up this version of the game, it's clear to see that it's unfinished, as the start screen featured in the game hasn't yet been added, with the game instead using a text-based screen stating the name of the game and the build date. Whilst the start screen isn't finished, the rest of the menus are already in place, however this build only allows players to play exhibition matches, as all the other menu options are disabled. The soundtrack for the game has also not been updated, as rather than the soundtrack featured in the released version, this early version still has the same soundtrack that was featured in the original SmackDown vs Raw. Heading into Exhibition and comparing the selection screen with the one featured in the final version of the game, you'll notice that there are a few differences, with these including name and rating changes, render updates and even brand new superstars, one of which would never appear in a WWE game. So let's go through some of the changes, starting out with Hulk Hogan 80s, or as he's called in the beta version, Hulk Hogan Young. As you can see from this comparison footage, the biggest difference here is that the original version of Hogan, which is shown on the left, doesn't feature the bandana that is present in the retail version. Judging by the original, Hogan's classic model wasn't planned to feature a bandana, however at the time of the game's release, Hogan had requested that any likeness of him include the bandana in order for him to sign off on likeness rights. This request wasn't just limited to video games, as Hogan made the same request to Jax for their figure line, causing Jax to stop including the bandana as a removable item and instead having it glued to his head. Alongside this change, there's also a small change in the camera angle that's used for Hogan's entrance, as well as a slight update to the entrance motion itself when comparing it with the version used for release. Switching to Trish Stratus, Trish also features a slightly different model to the one that was seen in the retail version, as the one used in the early build featured a different hairstyle, with Trish's hair being brushed back rather than feature a parting. Comparing the face on each of the models, you can also see that there appears to be different face textures in use, as the early version sees Trish with glossy lips and more natural eye makeup, whilst the retail version has less gloss, more makeup and darker eyebrows. Up next we have Rene Dupree, who features a big change as evident by the difference in renders, as the early build features his earlier look with bleached blonde hair, a fringe and ginger stubble, whilst the version featured in the release seen him sporting dark short hair, long sideburns and darkened facial hair. Another star who features a big change in render is Ted DiBiase, as the beta version sees him in his ring gear, which is also used in his entrance, whereas the retail version of the game included his business suit as an entrance attire, with that attire also used for his render. Up next we have the Doctor of Thugonomics, John Cena, who features a small change, as the early version of Cena sees him sporting blue jean shorts, whilst the retail version seen these changed to black. The only other difference is that Cena comes out with the WWE Spinner Championship in the retail game, whilst the early version didn't include any championships despite Cena being listed as a current champion. The next superstar to receive an update was Orlando Jordan, as the early version of the game seen him appear with short hair, whilst the version that was released sees him with long hair. Along with these updates, there's also a few other changes when it comes to renders, as John Giovanni can be seen with a slightly different hairstyle, Mark Jindrick features a different pose, and then there's very slight changes to Michelle McCool, Shelton Benjamin and Snitsky, who originally had his full name, however these changes are render changes only, as the models are the same as those that were released. So that's the changes to the superstars who made the cut for the final game, however there's two fully playable stars in this build that weren't featured in the final version. The first of these stars is the original Tough Enough winner Maven, who features a fully complete model, render and moveset. 
This finished version of Maven was set to see him return to the series for the first time since Smackdown Shut Your Mouth, however WWE had the developers pull Maven from the game after they made the decision to release him. Maven's release took place on July 5th, 2005, which was 18 days before this version of the game was produced, therefore we're pretty lucky that this model wasn't already removed, otherwise we would have never seen it in action. Alongside Maven, this build of the game also came with a surprise inclusion of former SmackDown star Luther Reigns, who had been released from the company two months earlier than this build was created. Unlike Maven, who appeared to be fully complete, Reigns' model was missing an entrance motion and therefore loaded straight into the match whenever he was selected, but the model itself looked to be fully finished. The cool thing about this find is, unlike Maven, who had appeared in the series before, this was the first game that Luther Reigns was set to appear in, and no one outside the development team knew of the existence of this model until this build was released. So it's cool to see that this model has finally been able to see the light of day, even if it did come 16 years later, and it does make you wonder just how many unused models there are from early versions of other games that are stored away somewhere, and whether or not we'll see any more of these released as part of Project Deluge. As for other changes, due to the fact that only exhibition is available, it's unknown how complete other parts of the game are, such as season mode. However, one interesting thing to note is that this version doesn't feature commentary, as the audio lines heard in the final version hadn't yet been recorded. Instead, in their place are various placeholder files that feature members of the development team reading through the commentary lines, as these recordings were used for testing purposes whilst waiting for voiceovers from WWE. Don't tell me he's about to do what I think he's about to do. You're damn right he is. There he goes with the FU. The bookend. He's looking to finish this one, JR. And there it is. The ankle lock. The ankle lock. The cold line from hell. He damn near took his opponent's head off. He always wants to get higher. And there he goes. Five star frog splash. Another difference that you may have noticed is the low poly version of Lillian Garcia, which can be seen during entrances, as Lillian's model didn't appear to be finished, nor was there any sign of Tony Chimmel, who would serve as the SmackDown announcer in the final version. So there's a few of the differences between this early version of SmackDown vs Raw 2006 from July, compared with the version that was released in November. There's probably more changes to note once modders start to dig a little bit deeper, but on the surface alone, seeing this build and the secrets that it holds, especially those never before seen versions of Maven and Luther Reigns, is absolutely awesome to see. So let me know what you think of this early version of SmackDown vs Raw 2006 and the differences between this and the final version, and if you want to learn more about Project Deluge and the archive of early builds that they've been uploading, then I'll leave a link to the project in the video description. Until next time though, thank you so much for watching this video, subscribe for more WWE Games content, have yourself an awesome day, and I'll catch you later.